down. You know, today we're talking about love is not bitter. Another word is love is not revengeful. Um, let's talk about this, what this is means. Bitter or being revengeful means you hurt me, so I want to hurt you. Here's an example. Imagine you're driving down the road, down the freeway, wherever your city is or wherever your town is, and you're driving down the road and you see an accident right in front of you. And the guy, two cars in front of you, slams on the brakes. So the next guy, the guy right in front of you, bangs into him. You're able to see it far enough that you'll be able to slow down and watch. But then you watch what happens. One person got hit. The other person felt like they were wronged because the person in front of them stepped on the brakes. So both of them get out of the car. Now, they could calmly go up and look at the bumper. Go, oh, you hit my bumper. You ruined my car. Well, let me get your name and phone number and insurance and all that kind of stuff. Or this is what revenge would do. You came out and you stopped at the brakes and you hit my car. Boom. I'm going to hit you. Boom. I'm going to hit you back. And suddenly we've got a fight going. We started out with a minor car accident, a fender bender, and now we've got a fight. So when the police come, they can also report the fire, car accident, and they get to report the fight. Did that solve any problems? No, it just made it bigger. I know this is being uh, filmed in 2020, summer of 2020, and we're having some major riots in our, in our country at this time. There's a lot of revenge and anger being coming back and people trying to get back at each other for things that they've done to each other. Or they think they feel have been done to them. Wrong or right, it doesn't solve the problem. In marriage, it does not solve the problem. When we get mad and angry at each other, it doesn't solve the problem to get back at someone. To try to take revenge. Proverbs 15.1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath. So look, look at some of the things that we do that can actually be, be revenge, causing revenge. Okay? Maybe... And, and I, I hadn't thought about these. I thought about some big ones like the gal that says she's not going to have sex with her husband because he's making her mad. What's going to happen there? I can tell you. His eyes are going to be looking elsewhere. It's going to be awful hard to keep him inside the family, inside the home. But he made her mad. Or maybe you're the couple or the guy or the gal who you've been hurt, so you clam up. And you go in your shell, and you're not going to talk to anybody. Now, you've seen families that have done this for years. I know some ladies who kids who haven't talked to them in 20 years. They're, it's revenge. It's trying to get back at somebody for how they felt they were hurt. Were they hurt? Very probably they were hurt. But 20 years of not talking to somebody? Or two, three days or a week or two? And you want to know why your marriage isn't working? Because you're holding bitterness. You want revenge. I love the verse too that says that God is the one that takes vengeance. It's not our responsibility to get back at someone that's hurt us. It's our responsibility to turn the consequences for their behavior over to God. And we try to solve the problem. Then I was reading some other ways that we may slightly be a little bit bitter or be a little vengeful. And these got to me. They got to me big time. Because of it. Oh, that hurts. You ever roll your eyes when somebody says that must hurt? Mm -hmm. Maybe you scoff, huh? Maybe you just got up and left the room. I have to raise my hand on that one. I get really mad and I'll leave the room. I'm afraid I'll burst and it might be a good idea to leave the room, but to leave the room because I want to hurt someone, if that's a hard one. Do we leave because we don't want to carry on the fight and we need time to cool down? Yes. Do we leave because we want to hurt them? That's not a good reason. You have to know your reasoning there. Maybe someone just pure and simply ignores you because they're hurt. I know gals will do that at church. Sometimes I have to watch that. Somebody's insulted me at church, done something that I didn't like, said something about me I didn't think was right. And I just don't go in the same door they are. I'll go around this door over here on the side of the building. It doesn't solve anything. 
It's for me trying to take revenge on them and trying to, instead of trying to let God solve it. We cut somebody off. You know, you see them go down the road and one person gets mad and they're going down the road and, and one person goes, and the other person goes right up in front of them and they get so mad. They just gonna, and they go, boom, right in front of them. Boom. And it's like you have this whole anger fight going on down, going down the road. It's like, you hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. People go into their shell or into their cave. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? That's a big question. Because love, love is not revengeful and it's not bitter. First off, we have to admit we have a struggle. That's number one. We have to admit we have a struggle. And, and I remember a time there was a gal um, at one Bible study group I was in years ago. And, and I would say something. I, I was kind of loud and bossy, I guess. Uh, at least she thought so. And so she shall say something across the room about how wrong I was. And, and I'd say something. She'd say something. And finally, some gals came up to me afterwards and said, do you see what she's doing to you? They thought she was really being rude and mean. But I recognized this gal had a position of leadership uh, in a larger organization that we we're a part of. And, and I didn't feel like it was my place to correct her. So I could have gotten revengeful and bitter and tried to hurt her back. Actually, she stopped me once at refreshments. We were cleaning up and everybody else had gone. She said, why do you not say anything when I do that to you? And I had to look at her and I said, God says I'm supposed to honor those who are in authority. And you have a position of authority in this organization. And I also believe that God will take care of the problem if I just get quiet and let him do it. I didn't want to hold revenge and bitterness against this lady. And so we addressed it in that way. I addressed it calmly with a gentle answer. I saw her several times, several years later, and we just had a friendly hello. Never really got close, but I wasn't carrying around that bitterness and resentment about her. I could be in the same room. I could be there. I could be in the same Bible study group and didn't have to respond to the angry words she said. First off, admit you have a struggle. And that usually means you have to talk to the person that you have a struggle with. Remember, if it's your husband or whoever, they can't read your mind. I was at another Bible study and, and I said something that I was really afraid might had hurt my girlfriend. And, and, and I knew she couldn't read my mind. She didn't know what I was thinking. And so I had to talk. We had to call her and, I got, and then we had to talk in person a week or so later. With your husband, you have to tell him what you're thinking. He can't read your mind. And you might have to tell your husband, I can't read your mind, hon. Can you tell me what you're thinking? Because we can't read each other's mind. We think we know. And the longer we've lived with each other, the more we think we know. I've lived with my man for over 40 years. Been married that long. But I can't read his mind. I don't know exactly what he's thinking. And when I say, I expect you to do this and that, that's me trying to figure out what he's thinking without asking him. Sometimes we have to set appropriate boundaries where we don't get hurt. And like with this gal that was in this, in this group, in the Bible study that was saying negative things about me that others were recognizing, I decided I just needed to sit in a different part of the room. I really needed to pray before I spoke. That was the boundary I was setting on myself. The distance was another boundary. And I decided I didn't need to be where she was at inappropriate times. And so God would put us together and we needed to be together. So I set appropriate boundaries. Sometimes you have to do this with your husband. Let's say, hi, hi, Rory, glad you're here today. I don't know who else is joining. She says, she tried to forgive the people that hurt us. She stays a prayer for them. She says, all right, all right, I'm too angry. I blow up and walk away and then you come back. That's right. Um, usually it's over something that's not really important. Remember, holding the grudge of bitterness is really against God. You might have been like me. You may have been abused. I was as a child. And for the longest time, I was bitter and angry. I was upset. And then when I accepted the Lord, I realized I needed to forgive my abuser. That meant I had to turn the consequences for the actions that he had, had committed against me back to God. And God says, vengeance is mine. He'll take the responsibility. So, we, But I didn't want to be around that cousin. It was a cousin. So I set boundaries so I wasn't around him or never around him alone. That's part of setting boundaries with those that hurt you. Some gals will tell me that it's their mother that hurts them. And I say, well, how often do you talk to her? One gal says, I talk to her every day. I said, 
Maybe you want to back off to once a week and set a few boundaries so mom doesn't always have a chance to hurt you. That's some of the things we have to do. Sometimes we have to set those boundaries. And as, as Rory said, and as I'm going to say, sometimes when we're feeling hurt, it's because we're tired, exhausted, worn out, and we're not responding in our normal way. I've realized that after about eight o'clock, I can make very snarky comments because I'm just tired. So it's best then to take a break and do some self-care. Remember, taking care of yourself is a great way to let God take care of you. You step back, you relax, you take some time for prayer, some time to get a new perspective, to turn the problem over to God. Do something to get your mind off the problem so you can get a clear view of it. And then go back and address it calmly and peacefully in a gentle answer. And here's another just fun tip at the end. You want to get more done in customer service problems when you either have to talk to the person on the phone because something went wrong or you have to talk to a person in a store if you can ever get in there. Maybe we can start to get in there now at the customer service department. Go in with a calm and gentle voice. You'd be surprised what will happen when you talk in a calm and gentle manner and say, I understand this is a difficulty that we're having, but I think there's a way we might be able to work it out. Here's what happened. And tell them what happened in a calm voice. I got a doctor's bill that I didn't think I deserved for a test that I didn't think I should have to pay for because I didn't request it. And the insurance wouldn't pay for it. it. Took over a year to get it settled. But I did it calmly and respectfully. And we got it settled. Remember, love is not bitter or revengeful. Take it easy. Take it calm. Admit you have a problem, number one. Number two, talk about it. Remember your husband or whoever can't read your mind. Three, set appropriate boundaries. You don't have to keep going to places where you're getting hurt repetitively. Okay, that you can set those boundaries. And if you need to, take a break. Take some time to pray. Take some time to consider what God wants.